Hey everybody, it's Paul from Alexandria Knife Sharpening and Laser Engraving. So I just got in this beautiful Spyderco Chef's Knife. I've wanted to see one of these for years. I've never gotten one in before and someone finally brought one in. You guys know I love Spyderco knives. I think they're incredible. I've never seen one of their Chef's Knives, but they have a collection, a small collection of Chef's Knives. So it's really cool to get one in here and it is beautiful. It's nice and light. This one needs some sharpening. It's not incredibly dull, but it's definitely dull for a Japanese chef's knife. I wanna show you what a goniometer can do for you as far as figuring out the angle of some knives. Now, sometimes a goniometer is not gonna help you a whole lot, especially if the knife is super dull. But if it's not super dull, if it's got a little bit of bite to it, it can help you determine an angle without having to sometimes do a Sharpie trick or something like that, or just kind of guessing at it. You know, a lot of times we could go, oh, this Japanese chef's knife, it's probably uh, 15 degrees. Well, that's, it's not always the case, especially when you have really high end ones and this one is super thin. It's incredibly thin knife. And a lot of times, the very, very thin Japanese knives will have lower angles. So I wouldn't be surprised if this has an angle somewhere less than 15 degrees. And that's why I grabbed this goniometer out to take a look at it. The other thing that I thought was really cool, and I think they might be sending me one, is slip a knife in actually has a nice goniometer it's actually nicer than mine mine's mine's a relatively inexpensive one unfortunately they don't even make this one anymore but i will i'm going to show you on here and it will also give you an idea of the sharpness level of a knife and we're going to we're going to check two knives here so i have another japanese chef's knife from the same chef that dropped these off and this one too is incredibly thin and let's take a look at where these two angles come in at so we can kind of maybe consider matching that a little closer when we go to sharpen them so i'm going to come behind my camera here and i'm actually going to kill this light over here to try and make it good for you guys to see the laser you take the goniometer and you have to get the blade right in the middle. So that's an important part. You want to get the blade as close to the middle as you can. Now, when I turn the laser on, it's going to split the light going down this. And we're going to look at the scale over there to read the angle. Now, there's going to be a couple different marks. The closest marks to the zero that we're going to see first are going to be the primary bevel. Now, on a knife that's this incredibly thin, it's going to be a really low primary bevel. I can guarantee you that. Yes. And so see there, there's two little dashes right there in the middle. Let me tilt this. See those two little dashes? They're rated like one degree. Remember I told you it was going to be really low, right? And now as we go down, then we got two other kind of like blobs at right around the beginning of 14 degrees. Now, sometimes you'll see more of a half moon looking thing, and that just means that the knife's sharper. So the sharper the blade is, the more defined you're gonna see your marks, all right? So that will also give you an idea if a knife is kind of sharp or not. When you see a little blob like that, where we're seeing right on that 14, and we really want the number where it very first starts. So this knife is probably closer to 13 degrees, would be my guess. But I'm gonna show you on a sharp knife what it looks like. So I just so happened in my pocket to have my Spyderco pocket knife. Now let's take a look under here and see what we see. Now this should be incredibly sharp because I sharpened it and it hasn't been used all that much. So we should see a very clear mark where our 
and we do okay so I'm gonna try and get this lined up a little bit better there we go okay so now do you see do you see the big swoops at around three degrees so that's our primary bevel and we want to line those up equally and then go out to the next marks and you'll see at three each when we go out to where 16 degrees we have almost perfect little dashes and that tells us that this blade is sharpened somewhere around 16 degrees okay so here's the other Japanese knife that we had here and let's see where this one comes in and this one's incredibly thin as well so again I'm expecting very low primary bevels and wow this knife is even lower than the spider co what I'm seeing here is right around 11 degrees maybe 12 so we had the spider co is around 13 and this is touching right right at 12 is the first place I see it crossing that mark so when you see that little swoop it's where it's hitting that first mark so that's how you use a, a goniometer okay hopefully holding that so you guys can see it see that little swoop where it's very first touch in the line is right around 12 so we're going to do this one at 12 we're going to do the spider co at 13 and we'll see how these uh come out now you can absolutely 100 percent still just to be sure you like what you're getting there from your reading you can still do a sharpie test on it if you want absolutely nothing wrong you can always do the sharpie test uh, but it's not a bad idea to sometimes even take you know more than one reading to get an idea of where you want to sharpen a particular knife at so we're going to put our knife in our tormek angle setter we set the distance is the first thing we set once we have that we can set the angle and we are at 12 i'm going to go to 13 so we don't need to move this much one degree down okay i am on 13 and now i want to see how this looks on this bevel and i'll show you it's it's like spot on so let me zoom in you see where it removed right here and that looks really really good so it looks like our goniometer was spot on and we're going to sharpen this particular japanese spider co knife at 13 degrees Now I'm not applying crazy pressure or pushing hard, especially because these ni this knife is so thin, I don't want to flex the blade into the stone at all. That feels good. It looks pretty good. I'm still seeing a little bit up here that I want to remove. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do three more strokes on each side. Okay, 600, here we go. Just gonna move you in a little closer for the last one. Give you a little, little different angle. This is my thousand grit. So Japanese knives, I usually like to strop them twice. Uh, one on this uh, strop on a 1x30. Turn my light on here. This will probably remove a lot of any leftover sharpery that might have been on there too. 
And you can use, if you want to know that you have your angle right, you can actually remark with the Sharpie. There's nothing wrong with that. You can do that. And then sometimes I like to go to a second strop. I keep a higher grit diamond spray on my round leather strop. And I'm just going to quickly touch this to here. Let's finish up. Feeling for any chips? Nothing. Incredibly sharp. All right. Next, push cut. Yeah, that's pushing. And I'm going to check those little pushes at every little level here. Look at this thing. <laughs> that is nuts. Then if you want to impress people on camera, you can, you can show how ridiculously sharp this is. Watching it flay paper <laughs> is amazing. This is one super sharp knife. Wow. And you could feel the difference even between, like I said, this was 13 degrees and I typically do Japanese eyes at around 15, but you can feel the difference. It was like a razor blade. It's incredibly sharp. My final thing to do to this is just going to be a little bit of Japanese knife oil. This knife clearly is high carbon. I see some patining on the lower part of the blade, but it's good patining. I don't see any orange. I don't see any colors I don't like about here. I am going to, there's a little bit of uh, Sharpie that didn't come off. So I'm going to spray this up and wipe it down to get any of that little bit of sharpie off of this beautiful blade alrighty so here's the finished spider co it's all set to go I wanted to show you what the angle looks like in the goiniometer after sharpening you should see those very nice half moons that I talk about and there you go let me see I can tilt this. This is the hardest thing with this is to show this on film. But you can see see those marks going right across 13, which is where I sharpened it at. So that also shows us that our goniometer is nice and accurate. And we're right there at the one-on-one uh, -on, -one on each side of our primary bevels. And I just wanted to share that with you so you guys can see that difference of what I'm talking about. You get that much sharper little kind of half moon on the goniometer when you have a very sharp knife and it gives you a very nice idea of what that angle is. And that little sharp half moon also kind of lets you know that that knife is very sharp. So I'm also happy to report that Slip and Ivan, the website I showed you guys the other day, has laser goniometers. These were not easy to find. I used to have a source on Amazon for them, but it dried up. It seems that person stopped selling them, and it's been a few years since I've seen them. This one looks really nice. It's uh, aluminum, and uh, it's a pretty decent price because I've seen these sold for almost double what this is being sold for, so that's a pretty good uh, deal right there. If you're interested in a goineometer, I would recommend that you go to Slip and Ivan.